What's going on guys, your boy Random Guy Kev here, and this is the Airsoft Report, your bi-weekly discussion on the things going on in the Airsoft community relating to event sales, news, product drama, YouTube, and all that random goodness that is Airsoft. The Airsoft Report is sponsored by High Power Airsoft, the best BB that's truly enhanced bio. Don't forget to check out airsoftgi.com and use the code RGK for 5% off your order. If you like the information being provided, don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. Information in this video will be available on Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Apple Podcasts. Timestamps are provided below. If you wish to skip ahead, please do so. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment. What's the deal? Airsoft GI has a black and gold edition mystery box version two available. Definitely head over to airsoftgi.com for more information. They also have their Tuesday and Thursday live stream on YouTube. So definitely check out Airsoft GI on YouTube to watch that. Uh, Fox Airsoft giving away a uh, HK416 gas blowback rifle. Check out their check out Fox Airsoft for the giveaway. What's happening in the industry? Navridge is dropping Navridge dropped the SSQ22 glass gas blowback rifle. Check out Navridge.com for more information. Upcoming events and competitions. Events and competitions are subject to change. Make sure you're following your favorite event producers for more details. May 5th to the 7th, Line Claws Thunderdome 2 in North Carolina. May 6th and 7th, Otherworld Productions, Downfall 9 in Pennsylvania. May 12th to the 14th, Milson West, The Balker Bulge in Pennsylvania. May 13th, Line Claws, Line Claws Tactical Challenge in California. Here's some additional competitions. CSL Competitive Speedsoft League, May 13th, Black Sheep Airsoft in Virginia. KWA Tactical League, May 6th, Battlegrounds at Extreme Airsoft in Rhode Island. Speed QB, May 7th, 5v5 Open Class Division at Tax City in California. So now let's get into our topic. You guys know how I love to put uh, questions and whatnot out there for the community to answer on Instagram. And they did come in heavy for this one. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna read over a few of them and we'll take it from there. So best, the biggest disappointment that has come from airsoft companies slash events. This was geared towards companies, individuals, people, and things of that nature. Um, the ideology of making the sport better than exploiting the shit out of everyone. We have people like that all the time. Companies that do it, that say, hey, I'm here to make the sport better. Hey, community, community, community. But it's all about self, self, self. We all know that. We've seen it. We, we know the clout chasers. We, this is such a small community that you can immediately tell who's doing it for what reason. And we hate it. We hate it. I know I hate it. Especially when I can see it and I'm like, come on, dude. Come on, come on. Either that applies to individuals and companies, you know, companies that are just trying to supposedly make the sport better, but they're not, they don't really care about the sport. They don't, they don't care about airsoft. So, you know, you just, you either call them out, call them out, or just completely ignore them. Most times, I try to ignore them because, for what? They're gonna fizzle out, and the community is gonna notice all of it. Um, almost anything Novridge, to be honest, wanted to love them, but no, their quality is awful. I've never used a Novridge product, so I have no real thing to say about it. But um, to each their own. I've heard a number of good and bad things about the Novridge products. Um, again, I still haven't used one, so I can't really give a definitive answer on that. Um, that the that the same thing always happens. Same product, but different. But quote unquote different. They say. I feel like this is in regards to the repetitiveness of the same products being released and people saying it's different. And we see that a lot. The, the just kind of carbon copy of their last product. Hey, this is a re-release of this product, essentially, with a different name and like different rails. And what did, what did you really upgrade? What, did, what, what What's the difference between these two? two? The barrel and the, the barrel and the grip. Okay, so still performs the same as the one that's $50 to $100 less. Got it. So I should pick up that one instead of this one. Airsoft. Um, proprietary mags every single time. Um, I mean, M4, I mean, yeah, the, m might be in regards to SMGs, where it's like, let's say, you, you would hope all the MP5 mags fit in each other, but they don't. 
They really don't. They all don't. They all don't feed each other. They're all not the same. They're all different. I guess, I guess it would be relating to that. Uh, repetitiveness, repetitiveness, take a chance, make it, take a chance, make a change. I mean, it's kind of similar to what I was saying before. Um, nothing very creative out there, essentially. It's all the same recycled garbage um, over and over and over. Copy and paste. Control C, Control V. Um, no, nobody will ever forget about the Airsoft Pro League fiasco. Bruh. Shoot. It will, uh, the Airsoft Pro League would at least come out once a quarter because it, it was a joke. It really was a joke. Um, my thing is when it comes to new things being introduced into Airsoft, don't immediately charge. Why are you immediately charging people when we don't know what the fuck this is, who the fuck you are? Let's be honest. Why do it? Um, I feel like you should start off with a couple free episodes. Let us bite. Let us bite first. And then, okay, you might charge $10, $15, $20. I mean, the, but there was a, pe a lot of people that was on board with this. I was like, oh, you're crying. $25. Why are you crying about $25? Bruh. I'm not randomly going to pay $25 for something I have no idea what it's about. I pay that $25 for food. I go buy food for $25. Leave me alone. And look at where we're at now. A joke. It's it's literally the, the joke of the airsoft community. Um, lack of variety or innovation. I mean, just like before, like a lot of times things get announced at SHOT Show or um, IWA, but sometimes we don't see that stuff for two to three years, maybe if that, even if it gets past the prototype phase, there's still quality control that needs to be done. And if it can't pass quality control, why release it? Um, I mean, sometimes things get released within a year, but I mean, I'm hoping in the next year or so, things will be a little bit different. Some spicy will hit the market and everybody's like, oh, wow, that's amazing. That looks great. And then we take it from there. That would, that would definitely be dope. Um, uh, NSL's entry price. So it's, I did reshare that NSL, NSL did respond with the pricing, which was about 650, 650 to $700 for a seven man team for two days of play. I mean, some, you know, some players argue that it doesn't make sense. The rules always change. The pricing doesn't make sense because they got to play, pay for lodging and, uh, transportation and all that stuff. I mean, I'll, I'm doing a whole other video on the NSL thing. I feel like they should have learned more about the community in the US before trying to launch here. Maybe do, do something light, a light version, so everybody learns the rules, everybody learns the play style, things of that nature, because you know you got different leagues out here doing different rule sets, different gameplay, and things like that. So it's like, it takes teams a minute to adjust. We all gotta be adaptive, but at the same time, it's like, make it, a one day event for now, just as a season, a B season type thing, like not like a full invested season. And then next year, come back stronger as you build your relationships and your partnerships and you get committed teams and stuff like that. It's my opinion. Um, a certain TDC hop up. This one was in regards to, I believe, uh, LA Kappa Customs part. Um, uh, normally what I do is when people provide me stuff, you know, I'm gonna put it up there, tag the company, let them know. Um, and it's always anonymous. I'm not tagging the person for what. Um, Cause nine times out of 10, if the person is putting it in my DMs, a lot of times they sent the communication out to the company, the company didn't respond. Nine times out of 10, sometimes that happens. Um, but you know, put it out there, put the response, put LA Capital's response, put that person's response. So everybody could see what, what the person meant. And it was educating for me to learn what TDC was. So kind of, confused about it but everybody has their own definition of things in airsoft which is interesting um I'm not a i'm not a tech i'm not a tech guy i don't know parts like that i know enough but i'm not that i'm not that guy so that's why I, essentially i put all that stuff up there um reliability and qc I, I think companies need to get back on 
that QC piece. Um, uh, yes, there's lemons here and there. I've, I've had a lemon here and there and I'm just like, bro, what the fuck? Like, what's up with this? Like, and my thing is a lot of times I just want people to just send me the product without ha without testing it before sending it. Cause they, they know if I get a lemon, I'm gonna say something about that lemon. As far as like, yo, I got a lemon. It happens sometimes, but I got a lemon. Let's see how, and my next test is like, yo, let me call customer service and see if I can get it returned or changed. I might act like somebody completely different, but I'm gonna see if I can get it returned how long that service. I've been wanting to do that for the longest, but everybody keeps, uh, I think people check the gun before sending it to me, honestly. Um, another M4, but with, but with different internals. <laughs> I mean, like I was just saying, like M4s, M4s will be the standard, but it's like, all right, how, how better can you make it for a, a decent price point? Because we we see some of the M4s out there coming in at a lower price point and they're solid. While some of the expensive M4s are like, why is this up here? This shit is garbage. Why am I spending this amount of money for it? But you know, that, that $200, $300 range for a, a really good, mid-tier high performing m4 that doesn't really need too many upgrades but it's still it's still working great out the box i love that uh for a specific price point but yeah let me know your thoughts on that like what are your thoughts on i mean i like just asking those questions on on uh, instagram um if you guys have any specific questions i should be asking let me know put them in the, in the comments and we'll take it from there airsoft uploads so i have about two two videos real quick patrol base those guys went over to uh a, a field that looks like shipment essentially um it was just it was a solid video i like i like again i any field a lot of fields outside the u.s are a lot better <laughs> because they they're allowed to they have the freedom to do whatever they want so like a bunch of connexes second level things like that it's it's really dope i like i like that those fields in other countries can do so much um definitely want to visit europe i'm pretty sure this is europe at some point just to just to do this um next video dials 46 he did a, a review on the lancer tactile gen 3. um he, he even posted his gen 1 review um and it's crazy that you know i would have to say that lancer is one of the few companies that actually listen to their consumers and they take the feedback they're just like you say their product sucks. They want to know why it sucks. Let us know why it sucks. What parts don't make sense. To, and a lot of times they'll revise it. And it's like, I put a couple Lancers in people's hands and there's people that said that, yo, this thing suck. And I let them run it. And they're just like, okay, okay. This for the price point, this makes sense. I like it. it it's running how it's supposed to, it's supposed to run. I like to run gun stock. So uh, I like to run gun stock until they burn out. I try my best to burn them out. Uh, but Lancer, uh, they, they did a lot with the Gen 3. I had a prototype before. And that was solid. People, I, people thought that was like a, a a combat machine or an elite force, or or a classic army. But it was a Lancer Gen Three. Um, but solid, solid reviews. Definitely check it out when you get a chance. But that's all for this episode. Let me know what you guys want to discuss next by leaving a comment down below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I'll catch you guys on the next one.